Holy shit, I have just watched the first two episodes of Psychopath Season 2, and so far it has been heartbreakingly disappointing. Now for those who don't know, Psychopath Season 1 is one of my top five favorite shows right now. And the reasons I love Psychopath have to do with its extremely densely thematic narrative. It's narrative with lots of explosive moments, twists and turns, great characters, interesting things ideas, a great world that it presents. Psychopath 2 is the follow-up. The first show was already a complete story. It told everything it needed to, but this one takes the the characters who sort of survived season one and uh, is a new story about them. And so far it has captured none of the charm that made Psychopath special whatsoever. It's being done by a whole different team, for one thing. Psychopath was animated by Production IG, who are arguably like the greatest anime studio around. All of their shows are exceedingly high budget when they especially when they go at a show like this where they're they're trying to make something unique and original and special. These are the people who brought you Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. They brought you Eden of the East, which, however it turned out narratively, was a gorgeous looking show. Psychopaths was a gorgeous looking show. The new show is being done by Tatsunoko Productions, which is partially owned by Production IG, so they are sort of a subsidiary, but they are not anywhere close to the level of quality that Production IG can bring to a show. They've done good shows before, but when you watch an episode of Psychopath Season 1 next to an episode of Season 2, it's jarring how much better the original looks. The character designs look better, the animation looks better, the colors look better, the design sense, and the directing is so much better in Season 1 that Season 2 is almost embarrassing. Every scene feels lifeless in this show. The environments don't have any life to them. The characters and their movements don't have any life. Nothing memorable has happened. Even though there's been action scenes, even though there have been explosions and things like that, the way that all of these are framed is boring to look at and sometimes just badly done. There's a scene in episode two where Tsunemori Akane and her two enforcers who are with her run down into a sewer to stop this, this guy and they all run in through the same entrance, all three of them practically in single file. They all turn a corner and point their guns at this guy. They're all standing right next to each other. In season one, they would have been in formation. One of them would have come in from the other side of the sewer. They would have surrounded this guy because that's what makes sense. That's what would be tactical. And characters always moved tactically in the first season. You don't g get that same sense in this one. Characters just seem to arrive on the scene. Afterwards, uh, the leader of section two with her two enforcers right behind her come in through another part of the sewer behind Akane's team and the girl fires at the bad guy and blows him up. She fires right past Akane's enforcers. Now I'm not I'm sure there's like an auto targeting system on these guns, but nonetheless she errantly could have hit one of them. It, it, I couldn't help feeling that that she could have hit one of those guys who are also targets for enforcement because they are, you know, they're enforcers. Uh it just felt badly done. It felt cheap and not well thought out the way scenes in the first show would have felt. The dialogue has been completely boring. The first show was written by Gen Urobuchi, and yeah, Psycho Pass was always full of tons of exposition, but it was always relevant to a central theme. All of the dialogue built up the main themes of the show. It was always about the psychopath system. It was about psychology. It was about how the system was affecting people. And almost every line of dialogue felt relevant. Yeah, it was dense. Yeah, it was talkative. And I could understand finding that boring. Personally, I loved it. The, the amount of dialogue didn't bother me because it was all about something interesting. In this show, the dialogue is not about any theme. It's not about anything interesting. All of it has been about building up this mystery of the storyline. The first season had a bunch of individual episodes and it built up a mystery around these episodes. Each one had its own little narrative that was involving and interesting by itself and usually had tons of world building tidbits thrown in. And then you would get little hints that these were contributing to a bigger mystery. And then once that mystery finally opened up, it stopped having the episodic episodes and we were able to follow along with what was happening. There was never a period in Psycho Pass where you're just sitting there going, all right, well, where's this going? And that's all that's happened in the first two episodes of season two. All right, where's this going? Uh, WC, 
stands for what color? We learned that in episode two. What's the thematic relevance of it? I have no idea yet. I'm sure it'll come to light later. But right now it's just a generic mystery show. There is like one clever concept used in episode two about like they, there's like a hologram hostage. That was an interesting idea, but it just doesn't come off as cool. It's not presented well. They don't, they don't play it up to look interesting. <sighs> the locations are so boring. Episode one of season one took place in like this cool futuristic downtown area where there was all these bright neon lights and had this grungy atmosphere that really got you into the mood of like, yeah, it's a cyberpunk show. You know, episode two mostly took place inside of like offices and stuff, but they also had like the, the mall and they had the, the hollow suits that they walked around in the mall and it introduces all these little world fleshing out ideas and this show doesn't do that it just has characters sitting around dispensing exposition at one another there's a part where a character starts a sentence with well as you probably know blah 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 things about myself yeah if she already knows that then why are you telling her oh is it for the audience by chance it feels hokey to do exposition that way and i'm not saying psychopaths one never did it but psychopaths one always was interesting everything they talked about was immediately interesting this show is trying to turn sunamori akane into the major from ghost in the shell i don't necessarily have a problem with that Akane is my favorite character. I loved her all through season one. Episode one of season two, the main thing that it, that it sort of builds up for her is that she has this motto of 299. She's trying to get people down to 299 on their psychopaths before she shoots them so that they won't get killed, so that there's always a second chance for them. And that's a cool enough concept. It works well with what she was doing before. It makes sense. I don't think you needed the entire first episode just to explore that one idea. But then episode two doesn't really give anything new to her character. We learn that she fakes smoke. I guess she like lights cigarettes, puts them in an ashtray, and I guess it's supposed to help her to feel like Kogami or something. I was kind of confused. And then it, it got me thinking about how smoking doesn't make sense in this world, because why would you be allowed to do it in this system where they even monitor like your health to produce food for you? Why would she even be allowed to acquire cigarettes? I guess maybe just because she's an officer? With Kogami, you know, he was doing it, but he was an enforcer. He was against the law. So it kind of makes sense that he was able to smoke, you know, that he was like basically fucked by society. How can Akane do it? I mean, she does get criticized for doing it, but the fact that she even is capable is kind of weird. And she's not even smoking. She's just burning cigarettes. It's such a weird idea for her character to do that. I, d I didn't really get it. Oh, and... I don't know, they're trying to make her like a cool hard ass who's like also like the Mr. Miyagi of fucking police work, which is fine, but like the new girl doesn't listen to her. The new girl who, and I don't understand why, I don't understand why she's like that. Like she's, she's trying to, she's like becoming what, what's his name, the other dude was, the guy who's now an enforcer in the first season, but... <sighs> It made sense for him to act that way because he, his father had turned into a criminal. His fucking partner had turned into a criminal and he didn't want to be like that. So he was trying to, you know, work with the system as best he could. This girl, I don't understand her motivations. I don't understand why she doubts Akane, who is clearly excellent at her job. Why is she against her attitude? Why is she against the enforcers? I don't get it. She, she hates the one guy. But she listens to anything Yayoi says because she's, like, gay for Yayoi, I guess, because of the first season. I just, I don't get her character, and they're not doing anything to make me care about her at all. It's one thing to say, well, the show, you know, is gonna have 11 episodes, maybe I'll care about her by the end. But I cared about the characters from season one immediately. They were interesting right off the bat because they showed a hidden depth. They showed that they were going to be expanded on and they were cool anyways, even from the start. The only character who wasn't that likable from the beginning was Ginoza, but you could tell that that was going to change throughout the show. He was the kind, like, that, that the whole point was that Akane was going to challenge his notions. But this new girl is not going to challenge Akane's notions. What is the fucking point of her being against Akane? I don't get it. It just feels sloppy, 
and it doesn't feel like it really has anything to do with what made the first season good, and it doesn't stand on its own legs. There's nothing that makes it interesting. Nothing jumps out. It feels like it pales in comparison. The directing is so much worse. The writing is so much more senseless that it doesn't feel like Psychopaths. And that could change, but my first impression is pretty negative, especially after episode two, which was just a slog. It was boring. Nothing really interesting happened at all. So I'm worried about this one. I'm going to keep watching it because I'm a fan of the first season, but I don't, I don't know about it. It's, it's sad. That's all for now. Bye.